Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be breaking down my profit strategy that I use every single league that I have used since 3.16 and has worked every single time without fail. Now, do keep in mind, I'm not in any way like a financial professional and uh, this might not work for you. I should also explain that this is a very tedious and time consuming process that not a whole lot of people are into. It's a lot less gameplay and a lot more math and trading. So do keep in mind that like this is a different way to play. You might feel, you know, one way or another about this strategy. So uh, with those disclaimers kind of in the in the air, I guess we can kind of get into it. So first thing I want to explain is what is it? Uh, my profit strategy that I use is called stack deck opening. I don't really have a name for it. Basically, you farm, uh, say about 30 chaos or so, and then you start uh, buying stack decks on market for chaos, opening the stack decks, selling the cards, buying more stack decks, opening the stack decks, selling more cards, buying more stack decks. And you keep rinsing and repeating that cycle until you hit uh, a lottery card say like a fiend card you sell that for five div then you buy five div worth more of cards you sell those five div worth more of cards that you have now opened and you kind of just snowball into this point where you're buying like a thousand two thousand stack decks opening them all selling whatever you whatever you uh open turning in some stuff that's worth money if that's kind of like what you want to do instead so yeah, it, it, it's got a snowball effect, and because of the way that cards are valued in this game, it's really easy to profit if you're buying in a large quantity. It's just a matter of how can I get to that large quantity and how can I open it the fastest. So the fastest way I've found opening stack decks is not actually by going into a map and right-click dropping them out of your window to for your filter to pick out the valuable cards. Uh, this strategy involves selling every single card you open, including bad cards or cards that might not even pick up on a filter. It also means turning in your Reign of Chaos cards, turning in your Gem Cutters Prisms cards, like turning in your Gem cards, your 20% uh, Gem cards for Gem Cutters Prisms. There's a lot of min-maxing involved in making this strategy work at its fullest potential. So the best way I've found to open stack decks is by putting a... 10 stack it, it, you can like you know get like 400 in your inventory but basically get a 10 stack alone with uh nine squares around it and then you right click drop right click drop right click drop in those nine squares and then right click drop the last one in the center uh and that's kind of like the fastest way i found of opening them and then you control click them with uh div tab having affinity turned on now do keep in mind that you will need a divination card tab for this to work because you will get a, a tremendous amount of divination cards. So you need a, a great way to hold them all. You just simply cannot do this without that tab. I, I have a ultimate divination tab handbook that I'm going to put in the description. And what that handbook does is tells you what cards to sell, what cards to turn in, what cards to hold and then sell later once their once their price goes up, or the cards to hold because they sell in bulk like a lot higher in bulk value than they do in a regular uh, one of one value, and then uh, cards that you should sell early and then turn in once you kind of get that snowball effect rolling and once you kind of you know you're out of the the muck we'll say so. What you're going to end up finding out is that you're going to end up with a lot of random currencies from turning in certain div card stacks. So say like a chance orbs, your alteration orbs, your val orbs, all of that stuff. You want to liquidate that all back into chaos and keep opening decks with the, the, the chaos. Uh, you Since you don't have to worry about keeping that currency, you can buy it later. You just want to liquidate it all into pure currency so that you can keep buying stack decks. Now, there will come a point where you're going to want to transition from chaos orbs to divine orbs. Uh, once you get to about like five divine orbs worth of currency, 
you're going to want to transition to buying stack decks with the vines because you are going to need if you if you want to do this quickly you're going to have to buy a lot of stack decks all at once so you're going to have to kind of undercut yourself a little bit to buy in bulk uh, especially when you get up to like the 2030 div card or 2030 divine range where uh, you know you're buying thousands and thousands of stack decks you're gonna want to beat out the competition and buy in bulk so you're not wasting your time uh, which means you might say say stack decks might be worth uh, one div for 130 well you might want to pay one div for 125 so that you can buy faster because you're not always going to get responses from the people that are selling at market value. Also, they probably have a lower quantity, which means it's going to take more trades, which means it's going to take more time. Now, now this strategy, this strategy does have a does limited, have a time, limited window? time window uh, uh, for, two for two reasons. One reason, one when reason, this video, when comes, video out, comes out, please do bear in mind that the price of stack decks might go up since uh, I'm revealing a very well-kept secret uh, right now. Um, and, then also keep in mind and then also keep in mind that the price of stack decks naturally goes up as the league goes on because there are less heisters and therefore there are less stack decks to buy. There are less heisters, there are less logbook runners, so do keep that in mind. Uh, usually I do this strategy for the first week of a league and then I will transition to magic find or some kind of map farming strategy or I will uh, sell off my investments, go into a build, and by that point, like I've got my my mirror tier build set up. Uh, yes, I do make mirrors within a, the first week of a league in this game. So, I, at the end of this video, you will see I do end up buying my mage blood. Um, I ended up opening three apothecary cards naturally, and then I bought the last two for twenty six divine each. Uh, at the time and uh, yeah I got a mage blood on day three without touching maps without even finishing the campaign like my character's level 63 yeah this can work if you know if you get used to it if you know how to do it it, it works with whatever build you have you just need like an upfront of like 30 chaos to start so do try and farm up like 30 chaos once you get that uh, you can get the ball rolling um, now when it's early on you're going to have, you know, a bit of a struggle getting that first lottery card. So what you want to do is really min-max all the value that you have. And if you do peter out and, like, go to zero, you can always just farm and go back. But just, you don't want to give up. You just want to keep doing it till you hit that first lottery card. Once you hit that first lottery card, it's really hard for you to not go infinite. Um, and then there's a point where, like, 20, 30 div... Uh, it, it just starts snowballing out of control and then you have like tremendous amounts of currency a few things what to do with the cards that you turn in uh, instead of the cards that you sell well you're gonna sell everything you turn in I including unique maps uh, elder shaper maps uh, but you can hold on to regular maps and run those in your atlas whenever you want um, but yeah do keep in mind that you're gonna want to sell all of your turn-ins um, unless they pertain specific to your build and even then if you're if you're behind the ball or you're you're down in value even if you get something that's per that pertains to your build it might be smart to sell it now uh, keep the cycle going and then buy it later once you are cashed out now since you are selling buying and trading so many things uh, you have to get very fast at trading and you have to uh, keep a level head when you get attacked by trades because you will end up with like three or four party members uh, at a time trading. So you do want to get really fast at trading. And also you want to undercut your your items. So you want your items to always be the bottom listing so that you can sell, sell, sell as fast as you can. You do not want things to stay on the shelf. You just want to trade as often as you possibly can. Now there is a step cycle that I follow. What I'll do is I'll buy stack decks, open stack decks, uh, turn ins, sell turn ins, sell div cards, sell currency, and then re -go and then reset. I'll buy stack decks and do it over again. Um, so that's my kind of my my mojo process so that I don't get kind of kerfuffled or mixed up. Also, 
uh, something I like to do is when I'm doing turn-ins or when I'm buying stack decks, I will ignore trades so that I can uh, keep it all on a one track. Uh, that's just a matter of preference. That's up to you. But to, to be the most efficient, uh, I suggest ignoring trades when you are uh, not in uh, sell mode, I guess. So what, what to do? Okay, uh, so I have a topic point written here. Uh, something you should be doing when you end up with a high load of currency, say um, say you end up with like 60, 70 div. Well, that's at that point, that's so much currency that like buying 60, 70 div worth of stack decks, like, yeah, you could do that and then open the stack decks, but also um, it takes a very long time to open that many stack decks. So something I like to do is when I get up to a high amount of currency, I will, um, uh, I will buy rising uniques uh price rising uniques and invest in them hold on to them uh things that you can invest into early that are valuable and will always go up one passive voices large cluster jewels mirrors uh mirrors are an insanely good investment if you can get them early i mean those two are uh kind of my go-to's and they're foolproof you can also do mage bloods uh do not do headhunter because Headhunter is actually priced typically higher and has a falling, declining price. Although it does middle out around uh, 70 to 100 div. But uh, yeah, early league, it is way more expensive than it is later on. Uh, so with that being said, like, you know, find, find a good unique or something to just kind of pull your money into when you get a high quantity of money so that you can then sell it, you know, three or four days down the road when it's gone up three or four times the price. Uh, another good one that you can invest in are any of the Emperor's Jewels. So Emperor's Mastery, Emperor's Might, Emperor's Wit. Um, I suggest not getting Emperor's Cunning, uh, but the other three, like those are really good investments as well. Those always tend to go up, although not as fast as Mirrors and um, One Passive Voices. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, in the background, I know I've been talking a lot in the background. There's uh, probably been videos going on, um, just kind of my process of, uh, you know, me opening, me selling, me, you know, doing the process so that you guys can kind of see it in action. I do suggest, you know, I, I given you a spreadsheet. I do suggest following it by heart as this is what works for me. But also, you know, you can kind of suss it out and pick if something's not working or you know if you want to turn this in instead of selling it like you know it, it's just a suggestion it's just a guideline you can shape it into whatever form you want but um this is the guideline that has worked for me uh for now five weeks running so yes i did end up getting a mage blood on day three by doing this and i plan on getting probably another mage blood lighter today or maybe tomorrow but um and i've also probably released this a little after so just because uh the markets probably might crash after after releasing this video so um you know get in while you can but uh i am going to probably release this a little later so that my my job's done and i don't have to worry about this the the market getting a little messed up here so yeah, your margins might also dip a little bit since uh, the market might be affected by this. So I suggest maybe waiting uh, as the market will uncorrect itself, or you can try to be fast and do it, you know, with the, with the pack. So uh, yeah, that's about all I got to say about the strategy, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I hope you guys get some cool, awesome stuff out of this. Uh, th it, this is a lot of fun. Uh, it is a hideout warrior strategy, but I really enjoy the gambling aspect of, you know, turning in some of these cards and being like, oh, you know, I turned in my bestiary card and I got Feral's Fur. It, it, some of the stuff is crazy and exciting. So, you know, it's not all boring, but some of it is tedious, like, you know, uh, putting in a full inventory of Reign of Chaoses and getting 60 K, turning them all in and getting 60 Chaos out of it. Or putting a whole inventory of the doppelganger card, uh, turning them all in and then selling them all for gem cutters prisms. Like, you know, some of it is tedious, but yeah, that's about all I got to say, guys. So 
uh, I will catch you guys around probably with a build showcase next, but um, yeah, I hope this is informative for you guys and I hope you enjoy. Peace out. See you later.